I just shipped what is probably my biggest project yet, a complete rebuild of my startup Insider Viz. We built it with Svelkit, Superbase, Drizzle, AWS, Vercel, Upstash, Python, MySQL, and more. A lot has gone into this, and it's really brought everything I've learned over the past couple of years together. So this is the brand new site. We've been working on this for many, many months. It's been a very large undertaking. For those of you who aren't familiar with what we do, basically what Insider Viz is, is it's an insider trading data tracker. We go through and pull all the form fours from the SEC. Those are the forms that insiders have to file anytime they make a trade. So say for example, you're Elon and you're the CEO of Tesla. So anytime you make a trade of Tesla, you have to report it. So you can see here on Tesla, if we look at all these graphs, you can see that Elon had a ton of trades at the end of 2022 when he was buying Twitter. And so we basically just make it really easy for people to see and understand this data. If you're interested, the site will be linked down below and we're also running a product hunt launch right now. So if you wanna support me, I would really appreciate you guys going and taking a look at that, leaving some feedback if you can. But for the rest of this video, I just wanna talk about the technical side of things. So getting into how we built this, this is the high level overview of the new Insider Viz, the whole architecture, the whole product and everything. And I'm going to go through everything we put in here, why we picked all these things, what I've learned over the years, kind of changing these things around. If you've been following the channel for a long time, you've probably seen me make a video like this about a year ago with our old architecture. Back then we were using Next.js, we were using a heavier Go backend. We were doing things very differently. I think we were using NextAuth at the time. We were still using Prisma. Uh, we weren't using Superbase. A lot was different and it was a lot more complicated. A big thing we've done here is we really tried to simplify things down and make this a much more maintainable site. Because one of the biggest things we ran into with the old Insider Viz is it was a living nightmare to maintain and update and work on. Because what we had is we had our Next.js site, which was like the core front end that the users would see. Then we had a Golang backend that was not attached to that, that we had to use to do all of our like logic and stuff like that. That was where our backend lived. So we had to proxy every single backend request through that. We didn't have any type safety on it. And both projects were kind of a mess because at the time we were still pretty new to this. And they like, that was the first real big project I ever built. So it was kind of a chaotic mess and it was not very maintainable at all. We had a really complicated monstrosity going on in the back end to get the SEC data. Our data model was really bad. It was just a mess all around. And a big thing we've done here, like I said, is simplify this down. So let's go through the stack here. So the core of the application is in Svelkit. Like I said, in the old application, it was Next.js plus a Golang backend. And here we've condensed most of our logic all into one big Svelkit app. And I've made a bunch of videos over this on this over the last year or so. If you've been following this channel for the last year, you've probably seen me kind of go on this journey of I was initially doing it with that, and then I've kind of realized that you can do more and more with this full stack JS type thing. And I really kind of became disillusioned with that whole separate backend thing. But I think a lot of the reason why is because the stuff that I was doing and the problems I was solving was really just like user auth, CRUD logic, and really just basic, normal, trivial stuff. I wasn't doing anything heavy and serious in those little smaller projects. So it made a lot of sense to condense all of that into one full stack JS project. And that's what we did here. All of our user auth, all of our user logic, so like uh, payments, checkout, stuff like that, fetching users watch lists and they're like save screeners and stuff like that. That's all being done in the Svelkit app because it doesn't need to live in a separate service. That It's just crud logic to a Postgres database. We don't need a full big Golang service to make that work. It's just silly. But where we do need the big Golang service is to handle all the complicated backend work, which is really a lot of the value of what our site does. And we'll go over that in a bit here. But for right now, what I want to talk about is the sort of pieces that we use to make this work. So obviously Svelkit covers the entire front end stack. I have really fallen in love with this framework and it just... For me, it clicks the most with how I like to build things. Having the page.server.ts to load data and serving that down in the Svelkit page just makes a lot of sense to me. And for a site like Insider Viz, it makes a ton of sense. If you look at like this company page here for Tesla, it really all we need to do is when the user lands on this page, we need to fetch the stock data and we need to fetch the forms and then we need to display them. So it makes a lot of sense to just put a loader and then the page. It just works. It works really well for what we're doing. And I really like it. Another big reason why we went with Svelkit is because it doesn't have a virtual DOM. Our use case is pretty unique in that we need to do really heavy custom D3 stuff. All of these graphs are custom built by us. These aren't like, we're not really using a library. I mean, we are using D3, but we're doing a lot of custom stuff on top of it to make these work. And while you can do this in React, we've done it in the past, the old site was written in Next.js and we had these graphs back then. 
it's a lot easier to work with when we don't have to deal with the virtual DOM and don't have to deal with basically escaping React. Here we can just kind of do it in normal JS because that's kind of what Svelkit is. It's just normal JS. So that's the front end side of things. For our little like front end, back end type thing, I don't really know what to call this right here. This is something I've been thinking a lot about lately and over the past few months. I don't fully know how to put it into words, but effectively what we have here is we have this like deeply coupled backend here. So like this is like our very closely attached like user backend almost I want to call it. And then this is our like separate backend which handles all of our background services, our cron jobs, our queues, our parsers, all the like um like our heavy custom search implementation which we had to do a bunch of like data frame and ML stuff to get that working because our data sets really large and complex. So getting a good search so that when you search up Tesla, you get the right Tesla and not just some random ass company that doesn't exist anymore. That was a huge pain to do. So we needed a separate service for this. Uh, really what we have over here in this like closely coupled backend is really just authentication and user stuff. So for all of that, we are using Postgres in Supabase. I've very quickly fallen in love with Supabase. It works super well for the stuff I'm building. The authentication provider is really good and the database is just a Postgres instance. There's not a huge amount of vendor lock in here. They have a really good managed service. They are bringing in a lot of the features which I've wanted for a long time. Their branching system is now here. It's really good. Their local experience is extremely good. Having a Docker container that you can quick instantly spin up with their CLI to get access to a local admin UI, local authentication, local data database. It is really, really good. So I've had a great experience with Supabase. I think this is going to be my go-to for most projects going forward. Um, we also have Upstash here for rate limiting because again, we're hosting this in a serverless environment. I'm sure you've seen over the past couple of weeks, all of the drama with the 80 bajillion dollar serverless bills because someone got DDoSed or something ran infinitely. This is just to protect the site, ensure, we're, um, ensure we don't get destroyed by anything like that. I also have a spend limit set on Vercel, so we're not going to end up with any serverless horror story type stuff. We're also using this for the vector database. We're doing some more complicated stuff with that that's not quite live yet, but you'll see that in the future. It's just really a convenient and easy to use provider for Redis and vector DBs. Then of course, we have Stripe for our payments, and that's kind of the front end side of things. Like I said, we really tried to simplify things here, and that's been a huge thing that I've really been working on in all my projects and everything I'm doing, is I'm trying to simplify, simplify, simplify. I have been really, really bad about the metaphorical complexity demon. It's I think that's just kind of something that comes with learning and being new to things. You learn all these technologies and you learn all these different things and you want to use them. You want to use the microservices. You want to use the gRPC. You want to use the crazy hyperscalable backend. And I honestly think going down those rabbit holes made me a better developer and it allowed me to do better things. But now that we've really gotten to the point where it's like, okay, we need to take this seriously and really try and turn this into a business, scale this up, be able to maintain this for a long period of time you know, we don't need that shit yet. We're good. So we really just need to make sure that this is really quick and easy to develop on. And it's super simple to maintain in the long term. We've had a bunch of bug fixes we've had to make since this has gone live and we can get stuff deployed within like two minutes. It is super, super quick to just make a change in dev, push it up, make sure it passes the Vercel check. If it passes the Vercel check, we hit merge to main, it'll deploy there. And then that's it. It's like two minute process. We have our changes in prod makes life way, way easier. And then finally, I want to talk about this like heavy backend type stuff I was alluding to. Now, all of this is actually being hosted and built in AWS. This is something that we, um, the guys and I are really working on right now is we're trying to get better at AWS, really learn it and try and get deeper into the services there. I know that you can accomplish all of the stuff that we're doing in here, which is like cron jobs, custom search, all that shit. You can do that with, by stitching together a bunch of different services. And that works really well, but one thing that we found is once you kind of figure out how they work, the Lambda system is extremely powerful and there's a lot of, like we can kind of just do everything in AWS and it does feel really good just if we have something that we need to do, like if we're like, okay, we need to just host this little piece of our application or whatever, we can just architect it in AWS. And again, this is something that's still kind of in progress, me, us figuring this out, and I don't fully have the answers yet, but the kind of general vibe that we're getting here is I think the eventual vision is that our sort of dedicated backend stuff can it, it, like AWS can almost become a part of your infrastructure. I think um, SST does a really good job of this. And I've seen a lot of this on Twitter. And this is something I'm really interested in right now is this idea of architecting things with like event bridge with lambdas with HTTP gateway doing all that stuff to have our backend 
just live in AWS and be able to just create and manage things in there. So in this backend world right now, it's pretty simple because we haven't gotten into 13 Fs and annual reports. Those are coming very soon. That's where things are going to get really fucking complicated. But for right now, all we really need to do is we have this Golang service, which is just a cron job. It'll run every minute or so and go to the SEC, fetch the forms. It'll load those, parse the XML, do all the shit we need to do. Then it'll save those into a MySQL database. And then that MySQL database is what we're querying from our Svelkit app. This is a big change that we made from last time. Last time we had a Golang service that sat right here and all it really ended up doing is we were just proxying requests. We would go from our forms database to our Golang server to our Next.js server and it was just a huge pain in the ass to maintain. It really didn't get us anything good versus now what we're doing is we're connecting directly to our forms database from our SvelteKit app. We have uh, Drizzle connected to it so now we just get end-to-end -end type safety really quick and easy. We can work with it directly there. There's no, we don't have to spin up multiple projects to work with things in dev. It's just made life a lot easier and I really like this system. It feels a lot better. And then of course we have our custom search and that's really it. That's the core of what we built here. Like I said, we really tried to simplify things down. And while this is just the beginning of this project, we have a lot more that we want to do here. A big thing that we're working on, and this is something that I'm working on personally, is we want to really stick with this and let this one grow. I have a really bad habit of building something and then walking away from it for a little bit and then coming back to it and then just rebuilding it from scratch. I am really, really bad about that. I think that made me a much better engineer much quicker than I would have if I had just stuck with one thing. But now the time has come to really focus on the business side of things and that requires us to kind of pick a stack and stick with it. And I think I really have kind of settled on Svelkit, Superbase, Vercel, eventually Vercel if it gets to be enormous and we're really scaling up and we need to. This will just get stuck in AWS Lambdas, we'll just probably migrate to SST, that's probably what will end up happening. And yeah, that's really all we need to build whatever we want to build. Like I said, this has been an enormous undertaking and really for anyone watching this, if you haven't built anything like this before and you're trying to learn and you're doing different stuff, I highly recommend trying to build something more ambitious like this, which is well beyond the scope of a tutorial. A lot of the stuff in here is very much what you would find in like a normal tutorial. It's a lot of just basic crud logic and authentication, that kind of thing. And I think that sort of stuff is extremely important. A lot of people like to dunk on that side of things and just say it's trivial and it doesn't actually matter, but it does matter. And you, it is a requirement for you to be able to do the really big complicated stuff. But in any real application, in any business that actually provides real value to users, there's going to just be really non-trivial, non-tutorial type stuff. There's no tutorial out there for fetching data from the SEC, loading it into a cron job, parsing that into a new schema, putting it into a MySQL database, and doing a bunch of aggregations over a Svelkit app. There's no tutorial on how to build our custom graphs in D3. These are all things that we have to figure out ourselves and build on top of the foundations, but we still need to have the foundations of auth and user stuff and all that shit to make this actually work. So yeah, really what I'm trying to say here is uh, build more shit, try and make more complicated and ambitious projects. You will learn a lot. You'll become a much better engineer in the process. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll have more to say about this in the future and I'm sure there will be a lot of crazy stories and things that happen as this scales up and we grow. And uh, yeah.